Hey everybody, what's up? It's Ross here. Um, I had no intention of recording any kind of harmonica lesson today. Uh, in fact, I've really been trying to switch gears and work on a new project. I'm going into the recording studio, and I'm super excited about that. Am I recording a harmonica album? No. Recording an album of original, of original material, and there's some harmonica on it. But anyway, I'll tell you guys about that later. Um, but I'm here at this particular park where I recorded the legendary YouTube harmonica lesson, Blues Bends in the key of G on a C chromatic, or whatever the title was, where I did the thing about the... I was bending notes on a chromatic in a bluesy fashion uh, in G on C. Anyway, what do I want to talk about today? Um, I want to just really briefly talk about the importance of knowing the names of the notes on your chromatic harmonica. And it's, as it turns out, it's not needful to be overwhelmed by that prospect. Um, it starts off with some baby steps of knowing the names of three notes. This is the blow series. Only contains three notes when, when we don't involve the slide. So um, there's a, a, a musical shorthand that you could use. If you play chord instruments and you understand chords, here's the shortcut. The blow notes are a C major triad. There's only three notes. If you happen to know the names of the notes of the C major triad, that helps tremendously. Otherwise, you're going to have to take the extra step of learning and memorizing C, E, and G. So on your harmonica, that's it, C, E, and G. And then it continues all the way up. Um three notes. So that would be a first step uh, then to understand that the draw notes are a D minor triad plus the note B. Um, that would be a second step. And also you could think of it as understanding that the first four holes contain all of the notes of the C major scale. And you could just count up C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then it ends on C. So four holes. C to C, C major scale. That's We're not incorporating the slide at all. And that is a foundation to memorize those seven different tones. And, I mean, if you're a guitar player, your guitar teacher is going to make you memorize six different notes. What's, you know, like the standard tuning of a six-string guitar. And if you show up to your second guitar lesson and you have not memorized that, he's going to be like, guess what? Guess what I'm going to assign you next week? You got to learn these six notes. And so, uh, I just, I'm just all about my harmonica students need to know those seven tones to begin with. Um, that's the first four holes with an understanding that the next four holes are going to be tuned the same way, tuned exactly the same. And the last four holes are going to be tuned the same way also. So this is called solo tuning. Um, the next step is to, when we start incorporating the slide, this gets a little bit more complicated because all of the notes have two different names. So, uh, Easy to find a C sharp, right? We know that C's at the bottom here. We just push the slide in. There's C sharp. C sharp has another name. It's D flat. So that phase two of memorizing the names of the notes is this everything has two different names thing. So um, uh, where's G sharp? If you can find a G, you know where G sharp is. There's G sharp. G sharp has another name. It's A flat. And so on. So um, that's just a short little thing about knowing where the names of the notes are. And to realize that 11 of the 12 chromatic tones in the chromatic scale are located in the first three holes. So I use the bottom of the harp to navigate what 
like if I just want to find a B flat in the middle octave, I'll play it in the first octave first. If I'm picking a harmonica up cold, I'll just find that B flat. Uh, then I can find it in the other octaves. So um, then I use the bottom three holes or fourth hole if I need the note B. Um, but all the chromatic tones are in the bottom three holes. If I'm turning, if I'm turn the radio on, which I'm not going to do because I'm really sensitive now to YouTube's copyright thing. But if I turn the radio on, um, I could pick out the key to a song and tell you that it's in the key of F if it's in the key of F really quickly by using the bottom three or four holes of the harmonica. So um, I use that octave to navigate things to figure out what key the song is on the radio or what key the band is playing in. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing good. Um, uh, having uh, students register for my online course has been exciting. It's only $39 for four hours of harmonica instruction learning things in the key of F and G and C and D and then having fun and learning to improvise over 12 bar blues in those four keys. Check it out. Um, anyway, I'll talk to you later. Um, feels like spring here in Tennessee. It's awesome. Hey, I have one more thing I wanted to add to this um, and it's starting to get dark. So I have a limited amount of time. No, this is going to be quick. Um, I didn't want to get into the whole thing of E and uh, of of F and C. Um, as we when I talk about the the notes and they all have two different names, when we get into pushing the slide in, we have sharps and flats. So we have G sharp and also A flat. But let me just mention the two. Um, e sharp is the same as F still has two names, E-sharp and F. Um, uh, then B-sharp and C. So the balance of the tones have two names that are a sharp name and a flat name. And then you have these two kind of oddball cases where you have a sharp name and uh, a, a, a natural name, right? E-sharp and F. B sharp and C and um, so of course there's two ways to get the note F and there's two ways to get the note C actually three ways if you think about it but I'm not going to get into that um, anyway 